All right, I'm gonna fire this thing up myself for the first time so I can listen to this absolute beauty. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> this thing sounds amazing. Even stock sounds amazing. Feels so good. You can just feel the vibrations. Oh, it's great. I'm, I'm about to enjoy this thing. I'm about to enjoy this thing. This thing is, is about to be cool. <laughs> You know I had to stop at Whataburger. I'm hungry on this long road trip. <laughs> Found a Whataburger on the way because we're driving through Alabama and I'm like, I gotta stop. I gotta bring the C6Z. Not the C6Z, holy moly, I'm dumb. C-A-Z to Whataburger, let's go get some food. All right, just left wonderful Whataburger. I'm walking back to this beautiful beauty. This thing just looks so amazing at night. I, I'm, a, I'm at a loss for words, seriously. I absolutely love the look on this thing. Anyway, it's time to get back on this drive. Let's go, getting close to 500 miles so I can start ripping. I clicked it into gear, time to disappear. after that car drives by. Turn left, then turn right onto Montgomery Highway. Turn right onto Montgomery Highway. All right, I am in day number two of this road trip going from the East Coast to the West Coast. But um, our first big stop is going to be in Texas, even though I stopped today in Alabama. I got tired yesterday evening. It was kind of like, it was like around 7 or so p.m. I had already been driving for over eight hours. And uh, I was like, you know what, I need to stop and get rest now. Even though I would have been still good for another few hours, I still had like another eight plus hours to go. So I'm like, I'm not going to try to bury it through the night. And I didn't want to stop in Mississippi and sleep there. Um, I was in Tuscaloosa. I know it's football country out here. So I was like, let me... Let me just stop here and uh, get some rest. So I did, and now it's time to get back on the road. The cool thing about today is here in the next 50 or so miles, I'll hit 500 miles on the car, which basically opens up the car. It gives it all its horsepower. Um, right now, uh, being under 500 miles on the car, it's limited in horsepower, and the RPM band only goes to about 5,500 versus once it opens up, I think it's like 8,600, 9,000 or something crazy like that. So anyways, that's gonna be exciting and that's not that's gonna happen pretty soon. I mean, here are the next 50 plus miles. So once that happens, we'll start uh, you know, you know, hearing it, hearing the car a little bit, letting it go through the whole RPM bend, you know. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. I'm not trying to go 150 miles per hour or anything like that. But you know, as you're accelerating, you know, you can let it go through the band and uh, hear it out, and uh, it'll be really cool to hear this flat plane crank 5.5 liter naturally aspirated v8 just rip so anyways i'm pretty pumped about that should be cool but time to get down to the car all righty let my beauty stay safe all day all night and she did <laughs> look at her sitting there looking all pretty i'm glad they had this covered in space so i didn't have to sit in the, the elements <laughs> oh my gosh so gorgeous golly i love this car this thing even after a lot of miles, you know, 450 miles, this thing is looking absolutely spectacular. Yep, ready to get this day going. So this thing has remote start that I'm gonna use and um, haven't used it yet, but uh, I'm gonna use it. But I wouldn't be doing you justice if I didn't use it in the back of the car. So you can hear this thing fire up on a cold start. Let's hear this thing fire up on a cold start right now. 
Time to roll out. Let's do this. Put this in manual mode. All right, don't hit any stanchions. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to do a little reversey reverse. this camera option thing that like shows like the nose and everything because then you can pull up to a curb and like not hit it because this nose is a lot longer than what you would normally expect <laughs> cars all warmed up too by the way which is great news I let it warm up to like 170 something degrees usually Corvettes period any like aluminum motor type um, vehicle always let them warm up at least to 160 or so before you start Continue like then use the left driving the typically I mean not that you can't 69 south. not that you can't drive it before but I know in the race car world we typically at least let them get warmed up to about 160 or so actually I'm gonna keep this window down so you can hear this motor as I drive through this little neighborhood it's gonna get chilly here real quick so I'm gonna roll these windows up here pretty soon Yeah, it looks like some weather's coming in over here. I need to get out of here. <laughs> Not trying to get rained on or snowed on or sleeted on. It's chilly out in these parts. Luckily, the weather's looking pretty good for Texas. That's good. Sounds so good. <laughs> Sounds so good. I'll cut the windows up because the funny thing is, there's some cars you gotta put the windows down so you can really, really hear that exhaust note. And this car, yeah, you can put it down and hear it. You can keep them up, and you can hear it pretty good too. It's almost like even better when you keep them up so that you're not hearing any kind of wind noise at all. You're just hearing this beautiful motor that's sitting right there. <laughs> Golly, this car is so cool. This is stock exhaust like what kind of car comes with exhaust this good sounding from the factory I can tell you what kind of car does that it's, like, it's Corvette C8 Z06 use the left three lanes to continue on to state route 69 south in two miles keep right to merge onto I-20 west toward Bernie. I haven't hit the full 500 mile break-in point. <laughs> I haven't, oh my gosh, let me put this thing back in manual so this thing start, doesn't start shifting for me. I haven't hit the full 500 mile break-in point. That's why I'm not like ripping on it hard or anything. I'm really trying to take it easy. Even the accelerations I just did were like a quarter to a third throttle. Like I wasn't even pushing it. You know, this thing actually accelerates pretty decent. No wheel spin, nothing like that. You know, one thing I, uh, that, that was always cool about the, the past generations of Corvette is, you know, they, super torquey, I mean, they spin tires really easy, especially in cold weather like this. I mean, you start getting on it even halfway hard, they will just start roasting the tires. Um, this car is super, super balanced, um, but the engine's in the back, so all that weight's back there. And, you know, they've obviously, you know, over the years, suspension technology has gotten better and better. This car, the wheel spin isn't there now. Can it be there? Yeah. You know, wait till this thing opens up all the power to me. The the the, um, the wheel spin's probably gonna be there, but it's not gonna be anywhere like it was on the um, past cars. So, um, very balanced car, manageable car. It's a mid-engine car, and I, I love mid-engine cars, they're cool. I've driven Lambos, I've driven uh, Ferraris, I've driven um, R8s, I've driven all those cars, and, and, and they're super cool, super fun. Um, I think the first mid-engine car I ever drove was um, a Lambo Huracan. Loved it, it was awesome. 
you know and, and back then I was like man one of these days I gotta get a, like a Huracan I was like I made it like a goal right Keep and then when I heard that to merge onto I when I heard that Chevrolet was coming out with this mid-engine, right uh, like way right over here. When I heard that Chevy was coming out with this mid-engine car, I was like, you know what? Like, screw the Huracan. I'm getting this. This is gonna be my Huracan, but not my Huracan. This is gonna be my C8 Z06. So yeah. Um, now that I got the car, I get to experience this mid-engine life. It's cool. I mean, I got the front engine cars. I got the really fun front engine cars. You know, I got another C7 Z06 and drift car C6 Z06. But, uh, you know, this, this, man, this thing is this cool. It makes you just want to step on the accelerator, like, a lot. <laughs> I'm in sixth gear right now. This thing has eight speed. The only reason I'm in sixth gear is because I just like hearing the sound. I'll put it back in eighth gear. I'm also, like, kind of varying my my um, my gears right now just so I can vary the RPMs because as we're doing this break in I want it to be like different RPMs you don't want to you don't want to just sit at one speed one RPM for 500 miles right you're not really properly breaking it in you know you, you, you really need to get a lot of in a way city driving in so then I'm just kind of varying the RPMs you know, you know right now it's like you know just under 3,000 I can make it over 3,000 right there you know, but just kind of varying it a little bit, letting everything kind of warm up and and fit into its right place in that motor, you know, so that everything's all good, you know. Now, during the break you're not trying to rip on it, you're not trying to be wide open throttle all the time, blah, 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 you know. No, you're not trying to do that, you know, just you know, accelerate, decelerate, accelerate, decelerate, you know, cruise, 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 cruise at this speed, cruise at this speed, just doing different things to really let the motor just warm into it's the right place. <laughs> now, I can get all crazy technical on what that means, or you can go to Chevrolet's uh, YouTube YouTube page. They actually just recently dropped a video talking about the engine break-in for the Z06, so you can go watch that. I'm not gonna get all technical on you. You can go listen to them, get technical on you. But um, yeah, getting the uh, engine broken in, you know, properly is, uh, is very important um, for the life of this motor, right? You want this thing to be done right, which really makes me think, like, about all the other past Z06s I've, I've bought, right? Like, it really makes me think on, like, it's, it's, I've never been, like, a first owner on a car. This is my first time I've been a first owner. But it started making me think. I'm like, hold on a second. I'm taking, you know, I'm trying to do this right. I'm trying to, you know, do different things so I can make sure that this engine gets broken in properly. And... What did the past owners on my other Z06s do? Did they listen to the dealership? Did the dealership even inform them? Did they take the right information and go break in those motors properly? Who knows? Or did they leave the dealership and just start ripping? You know, you start hearing about, you know, here and there, there's some horror stories, especially on the C6 Z06 side where people were dropping valves, this and that. And um, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm like, well, why was that happening, right? Like, was everything done properly from the first owner? Were people just, you know, grabbing a car and just going crazy? Like, what was going on, you know? Um, because you hear these horror stories about the C6 Z06. My C6 Z06 is a 2006, so the first year Z06. And my car never dropped a valve. In fact, I didn't do anything with my heads until 100,000 miles. And I had, I don't know what the past owner did with my car, but I do know me, when I got it, I had tracked it at least three or four times on road courses on very high revving, high speed, 150 plus mile per hour road courses. Never had an issue. Then I went and um, uh, um, did the heads, you know, because, you know, I was I was hearing all this news online on, hell, you're going to drop a valve, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know, I was getting freaked out. So I'm like, man, let me just save myself. Let me just go do the heads just to be sure, you know. And I did them, you know, and once again, no issues. 100,000 miles later, no issues. Changed the heads out to new ones. Now I'm, I've had these heads on for at least... 12,000 miles on my C6 Z06 and, and you know no 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 issues right but um it just makes me wonder for the people who were dropping valves was it something that was happening because of bad you know 
uh, breaking of the motors, you know? Some people say, no, it was just a, you know, issue from the factory. Who knows? I don't know. I just know that there was a lot of C6Z06s made and not all of them dropped valves. So something happened um, and I don't know what it is, but whatever. My car didn't do it and it's still living the day at 219,000 miles. Will I get this to 219,000 miles? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, that's a lot of driving. I mean, that I've had that C6 Z06 for almost 10 years now. I mean, it'll be 10 years next year. It's nine years, right? yeah, over nine years. And um, that's how long it took for me to get. I bought it at 61,000 miles and I've basically put uh, about 160,000 miles on it almost um, in almost 10, nine years. So, and that's what daily driving the crap out of it going very very long I mean there was a year I was putting 25 30,000 miles on it for a couple years um, just because uh, it was my only car and I had to go to these far places and all that stuff it's really hard to put that many miles on that car I, I did it because I had the distances I was driving but I just don't see myself doing it with this car I just I don't have a need to drive you know 12 hour round trips every other weekend for you know you know a couple years <laughs> so yeah now we'll see where I go with this car um, look and, and some people ask oh why do you have a lot of cars because I like a lot of cars too also um, it helps me spread out the love on mileage right like I can drive this one week or one day and the next day drive another one and the next day drive another one you know, some people are like oh why have a lot of cars you can only drive one at a time yeah so you drive one one day and you drive the next one the next day or in one day you can drive three different cars which I've done you know you can just keep switch, switching them out and guess what that helps spread out the mileage and you know like put all the mileage on one particular car you're also like for me I just love driving sports cars I love driving fast cars so I don't want to have one sport So it's time to get back on the road here. The car is finally opened up. I get my GPS on here so I know where I'm going. But uh, yeah, now uh, car's finally opened up a little bit, which is super nice and super helpful. And um, yeah, I can finally get on it a little bit. I think uh, it moves. It definitely moves, that is for certain. About to make a U-turn down there or something. Alrighty. Once again, that's just part throttle. That's not even wide open. <laughs> that's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Alrighty, make a nice little U turn. In half a mile, turn left to merge onto I 20 West. <laughs> this thing just gets up. It gets up to where it needs to go very quickly. It's kind of nice. The acceleration on this thing is awesome. I mean, you there's a lot of other cars, rear wheel drive cars, front engine cars, At like right, past Corvettes, where you can't just accelerate that hard on the on the normal streets, roads, and stuff like that, because you're just gonna spin tires. Um, whereas, you know, go to drag strip, you, let's say you go to a drag strip, you throw on some drag radials, all that stuff, you can accelerate as hard as you want, no issues, right? But, I mean, you're not on drag strip every day, right? You're just on these normal roads, and it's nice to be able to be able to accelerate in a sporty way, you know, obviously not in an overly aggressive way, but in a sporty way. Um, and uh, I'm gonna back up a little bit right here, probably sitting right there, and I don't wanna get hit by somebody. <laughs> Thought I was gonna make that left turn, but got there too late. But um, yeah, no, this thing is, uh, it accelerates in a very, very um, 
it's dramatic, but it's not like over dramatic. It's not, you're not sitting there fighting for a ton of traction and, and this and that. You're able to do it in a reasonable way and it's fun. Use the left two lanes to keep left to merge onto I-20 West or Just Jackson. part throttle acceleration, which is a nice, a nice little sweet point is really, really good on this car. Really good car. Really good in this car. car and all of a sudden I love it a lot but I'm trying to like not you know overdo it with it and I gotta park it and drive another car that's not so sporty well this every time I jump in a car if it's a sporty car then I'm happy I'm cool right so that's another reason anyways I'm about to pull into this uh, Chevron so I can uh, hear that beautiful motor I need to get some fuel so good sounds so good this thing just sounds amazing I mean and that's cool like there's some cars out there where you got a hard accelerate to really get the real sound out of it or a good sound out of it when you can just light accelerate and this thing sounds good I'm not even I mean I got to like I think 5,000 rpm like one time there like I didn't even have to get super high in the revs careful with these little dips because this nose is interesting <laughs> the most interesting nose I've had on a car all right where am I gonna pull into and get me some fuel oh look at this thing look at this beauty right here the ZL1 who knows if I'm gonna make a new friend here we got Chevy guys here. We got ZL1 Camaro with the LT4 motor. I can respect it because I am a, a Z06 owner and we share the same motor in my C7 Z06. Trying to scoot in just nicely into here without putting myself in a position where I bang my door. <laughs> I think right here should be good. Should be good. Look at that beauty right there. Tinted windows too. I need to get my windows tinted. All right, time to get some fuel. Look at this ZL1, ZL6. Woo, sheesh. All right, guys. So I'm getting ready to hit that um, 500 mile break-in point, and supposedly when you hit it. All of a sudden, this um, RPM limiter thing for the braking period changes from 5,500 to a lot higher. What it is, we'll find out, but um, I'm pretty pumped to see what happens exactly. I'm at 499 miles right now on the car. So uh, let's see, we'll see what happens. Getting close to that 500 mile point. Is it going to give me like fireworks or something crazy? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I just hit 500 miles. Nothing's changed yet. When will it change? I don't know. Maybe at 501 miles. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. We shall find out. I'm glad I'm driving the speed limit too. I think it's 70. Because a copper just passed by. <laughs> I was cruising at 80 plus, that wouldn't have been good. Oh, there we go, there we go, it changed, <laughs> it changed. All right, so now the new red line looks to be about 8,500 RPM. It starts going into the yellow at like 7,500 RPM, and um, the new red line is, yeah, about 8,500, unless it lets you go past that, I don't know. I don't really wanna find out, but. <laughs> 
that's cool. So it changed. So yeah, it just basically you had to get into that 500 mile zone, and then all of a sudden it changed, and it did it. That was cool. Now I can finally uh, open it up just a little bit more, but I'm not gonna go too crazy hard till we hit like 1,500 miles, so I can actually start driving it harder. traffic rolling into Dallas at night but um, we're getting close close to home it's a little bit of traffic okay when I say a little bit of traffic a lot of freaking traffic <laughs> probably because it's 6 something p.m. even though it's like it's why I hate daylight saving time it gets dark and you think okay hey everyone's probably like already home all that stuff. it gets dark but it's only like 6 p.m. And everyone's getting off work. What's today, Saturday? Actually, eh, not that many people are working today, but people are out and about. They're probably traveling for holidays, you name it. But this traffic is gonna be a bit much. It's going to be a bit much, at least in this area. Hazard reported ahead in 700 feet. You're still on the fastest route. traffic <laughs> a lot of traffic oh my God. there's a little tunnel here <laughs> that's light acceleration it sounds so amazing in the tunnel <laughs> gotta love it gotta love that sound just made it back to Texas and when I say back I guess I was here a few weeks ago but anyways road trip was good with the C8 Z06 nothing but good things to say about it drove great rode great no issues put a thousand miles in basically one day <laughs> on this car so anyways it, it, it was good good solid car liked it a lot definitely gonna do a lot more videos on this car learn a little bit more about it um, I didn't really get a chance to really dive crazy deep into this car I'm still trying to learn it once I know more about it I'll get on video, uh, dive into it more, showcase more about the car, do some things, you name it. But uh, yeah, overall, good solid road trip. Made it here to Texas, 1,000 miles later. We're here, car looks good, looks absolutely pretty. You can see right here, it's just looking absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, good solid trip, and uh, I will catch you guys later.